Okay, so we'll be uh, starting with that what actually agenda that we have to cover today, right? I'll try to cover um, the majority of the things today. So we'll be uh, having a brief introduction about Cassandra, right? The background, uh, then a couple of use cases to get started with actually, where actually Cassandra is being used, right? The motivations behind using Cassandra, right? And uh, then the data model which is there, and uh, we'll, we'll have, uh, you know, uh, just, just a brief introduction about the query language which is used in Cassandra. We call it as CQL, CQL right? Uh, the Cassandra query language, right? Uh, we'll, we'll discuss uh, in brief about the architecture, right? And uh, uh, that will actually uh, sum up uh, the session for us today. Okay, so uh, we are uh, about to discuss about uh, the Cassandra background, that why actually, you know, there was a need for something like Cassandra when we had like RDBMS uh, in picture, in place, right? and what is actually the dire need uh, to come up with, right? So uh, talking a bit about Cassandra, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's the open source database that we have, right? Uh, and uh, there are like similar uh, features of Cassandra which actually differentiate it from the other similar system. And when we talk about the other similar system, right? Uh, they essentially are uh, your, uh, 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 the other RDBMA systems which are there, right? And also the other NoSQL databases as well, uh, which are there, okay? Uh, Cassandra actually belongs to uh, the NoSQL fraternity, by the way, right? So we say that uh, NoSQL, right, stands for not only SQL, right, uh, is a bit different than our RDBMS systems in way it stored the data, right? So uh, different uh, uh, types of NoSQL databases we have. We have graph databases which are there. We have document stores, uh, the Mongo, the thing that we have discussed, and then we have like uh, uh, the column family or uh, the column major databases or uh, the key value stores, uh, Cassandra is uh, with, uh, to, to which Cassandra is falling to, that is uh, uh, the key value store that we have, right? Uh, so Apache Cassandra, talking a bit about it, right? So Apache Cassandra is uh, something uh, which was created by the Facebook people, right? Uh, it was actually created to uh, power the Facebook inbox search that they had, uh, right? So uh, Facebook was actually... Uh, uh, was was going up, they were scaling up and they had like a lot of messages which was coming up their way, right? And to implement an efficient search there, where are any RWMS, they were actually using a MySQL solution, uh, which was actually failing there. They actually invented Cassandra, right? Uh, so uh, what about the architecture part and, uh, and the other things which are there? We'll discuss about those details later on, right? So they open source Cassandra in uh, like 2000, right? And uh, it becomes an Apache incubator project, right? And uh, then like in 2010, it graduated as a top level project, right? And the post that there's like a, a good acceptance of Cassandra in the market, right? And uh, there's like a good uh, uh, developer fraternity as well, which is uh, uh, providing the support. And of course, we can uh, open the JIRA tickets if you know about that, right? We can have tickets open just for uh, uh, if you face any issue there or you want any support thing to be there. Apart from that, uh, Datastax is someone who has actually picked up Cassandra and they are actually shipping Cassandra uh, as, uh, uh, you can say that, uh, an enterprise version which is there. The motivation behind using Cassandra, it was, uh, first of all, it was like, uh, uh, there's like large amount of data which was actually across servers and it needs to be handled, right? And then uh, because they were about to handle something which is, uh, uh, the inbox a feature for them and it uh, had like messages which was there which is not actually uh, in a structured manner uh, available right and uh, there's like a, a lot of unorganized data that we need to handle with right uh, they need something which is easy to implement and deploy right so uh, if you guys have worked with the RDBMS system you might understand that actually it is difficult actually to distribute the RDBMS uh, the uh, relational database management systems which are avail available here, right? So it's like a single server which is handling our RDBMSs and we have all the data present there and, uh, you know, it when it comes to actually sharding it, actually uh, having it on multiple uh, servers, clusters, right? It's a difficult thing to handle there. Then the thing was uh, something which actually can relate uh, the RDBMSs available in the market today, right? Uh, but should also support whatever uh, we need there, right? The best thing which is about Cassandra, and you might have heard about these things uh, uh, a bit uh, as well, right? Uh, you know, uh, Netflix is something which is like very famous there in the United States of America. And uh, once, uh, I, you know, I, I read this paper that Netflix guys were working online, they were demonstrating this particular thing, 
and while actually working right keeping netflix uh, uh, on and you can say that up actually they removed and added cassandra nodes in there right cassandra nodes are essentially the machines which actually do the processing thing right so uh, the architecture for cassandra is such that it actually guarantees a very high availability right so one of uh, this this guy i have taken it from uh, you know actually twitter right one of this guy is, is actually tweeting it and actually telling us that it took him 10 hours to notice that one of the cassandra node was actually down it was a hardware failure but he was not able to notice it because everything was just kept on working right there's there's uh, nothing like uh, you know that the node is failure and the system is down and uh, you know uh, it's it's unavailable right so everything was working even with the, a node failure there right uh, let's uh, get to the general design feature that we have right so uh, as we know that uh, the whole soul uh, requirement behind getting this Cassandra thing designed was something like there was like huge unorganized data that needs to be processed. Uh, Facebook people, they had a lot of messages uh, which are coming their way and they need to actually power their inbox search and they need to, uh, to, to have some, they need to have something which can actually scale up to that uh, amount of data and actually can, uh, you know, do that thing right and very efficiently so the emphasis was on performance right uh, and uh, that's why we, we uh, had uh, this this Cassandra thing up and uh, the thing is that they emphasize more on performance as compared to analysis so when we say that as compared to analysis you guys have been working on RDBMS system right so RDBMS as you can see that we have like databases created there right and inside databases we have like tables which are created right and uh, you know the data which is stored in tables it can you can say that virtually actually uh, handle any sort of query in there so for example you have this table right named as tbl1 and then this particular table tbl2 you know and you want to per get, uh, get some data out of these particular tables you can i mean sort of write any kind of query there joining these two tables or more than two tables together and you know, uh, uh, having any kind of schema out of that particular table and, and, you know, you can analyze the data in any possible manner which is there. The thing is, uh, Cassandra is not known for it actually, uh, for its analysis purpose, right? But still there is like, uh, you know, a support for tools like Hadoop, of course, right? We'll be discussing about those things uh, as well, right? But performance is something like, which is like the major factor here, right? Uh, talking about the organization of the data here, right? So what's different actually for the other RDBMS systems which are there, right? Of course, uh, we have like uh, uh, databases, right? So these databases are actually called as right key spaces here, right? Uh, we have like rows, right? Which are uh, which which club together to create uh, tables, right? Uh, the tables that we create actually uh, uh, can have primary keys as well, right? and uh, uh, we can have like uh, a single column as a primary key or we can have like uh, uh, a composite primary key or a cluster primary key there right so the rows actually right which are like collection of multiple columns right uh, you know, they are divided into kind of you can say the two parts first is the primary key which is there and then it's like the remaining columns which are clustered together uh, uh, in, in correspondence to that particular uh, column which is the primary key column right uh, and uh, tables, of course, they can be created, dropped, altered, just, just like any other uh, RDBMS system there, right? And uh, we can do anything on top of that, right? Uh, talking about the language, right? So every RDBMS that we have actually follows something, a standard in SI92, and we call it as like SQL, which is written on top of it, the structured query language, right? Uh, Cassandra, right, use a, a kind of a similar dialect, I'll say, right? Not exactly, but kind of a similar dialect, right? And we call it as CQL, the Cassandra query language, which is like, you know, very much similar to SQL, bearing like a couple of uh, niggles here and there that, that you will understand when we, are, when we are going to discuss about CQL, right? Very less uh, uh, learning curve to, to actually uh, get started with the Cassandra. That this guy is actually saying that, all right, uh, uh, that a particular node was down, but for 10 hours he was not able to spot that, uh, that, that, that this node is down and, uh, you know, uh, system was running up and fine how actually Cassandra uh, achieves this uh, uh, availability, right? So first of all, when we say that, right, the architecture for Cassandra is a peer-to-peer -peer cluster, right? It's, it's a decentralized design which is there, right? It's nothing like a master-slave architecture, 
it's nothing like one of the machine is acting as a centralized machine and then it is uh, you know controlling uh, uh, the other slave machines which are there right and uh, you know whatever the request we are supposed to you know any any write request any read, read request is supposed to actually be submitted to the master machine and then that master machine should actually distribute the load actually to one of the slave machine and get the things done right it, it's not the case here right it's a decentralized design it's a peer-to-peer -peer cluster in this example that if I have like six machines right they'll be connected to each other right Every machine has the same role. So what it left us with, no master. When we have do not have like a single machine which is supposed to act as a master, right? There's no single point of failure, right? Of course, and no bottleneck as well, right? It it it's not like the master machine is like choked and you know it's not able to take any further request and you know we are not able to get any data or write write any data into the RDBM system. This is not the case here. Yeah. 